Hey everyone, my name is Chris. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video today. Uh, so the next uh, video that we have today is going to be based off of uh, your seat movement. Uh, this is a very common question that we have being asked in the service center, on the showroom floor, all over the place. Uh, customers coming out of actually older BMWs and they're coming out of um, any, any other brand vehicle as well. Uh, where when you shut the car off, the seat retracts, you know, pulls you back, steering wheel, you know, goes into the dash, folds away just to give you more space to get out of the vehicle. There are so many customers asking, will their new BMW do this? Will the driver's seat go backwards? Will the steering wheel, you know, move up, move away, get out of the way to give them space to get out of the vehicle? Now, I'm not gonna really touch upon whether or not older BMWs did this. I mean, I've, that's a whole other thing. Um, I'll, I'll just briefly say that I have seen some of them do it, but I haven't done enough research to really understand why and which ones and which options and all this other stuff. So I certainly can appreciate that in the past, older ones have done it. And I'm not talking about the last couple generations, I'm talking about beyond that. So I know our really older models uh, used to do this at one point in time. So what I'm gonna focus on today is whether or not your brand new BMW is going to be doing that. And the first thing we need to start with is which model you have and uh, which options and equipments and features in the car are essentially power or motorized. So if we look at the lineup as a whole, and again, this is specific to uh, the United States, um, anything under a five series that we sell is not going to have a power steering wheel. Okay, that's going to be a manual control. So right off the bat, we have to understand that if you have a two series, three series, four series, if you have an X1, X2, X3, X4, um, Z4 actually as well, um, these sorts of vehicles, anything under a five series, your steering wheel is not going to move automatically. That is a manual steering wheel. There is a control or a little lever, if you will, under the steering column that you kind of flick down that unlocks it and then you will manually adjust the wheel yourself. Okay, so that's not going to move on its own. Each driver, if it's a different driver that needs a different positioning of that steering wheel, will have to adjust that steering wheel each time they get in the car. If you have iDrive 7, doesn't even actually doesn't even matter. If you have iDrive 5, 6, or 7, or 8, it doesn't really matter. And if you have anything under a 5 series, right? the steering wheel component is not saved to your driver profile. It is not stored in your My BMW account because it is a manual movement, okay? Uh, so that rules that out. Your seats though, they are power, right? They should be. Um, I know at a certain point in time, there were some chip restraints and some four series were built with manual seats, um, obviously, for that car, you know, this does not apply, uh, but most of our vehicles, they do have power seats, okay, for the driver and also for the passenger. So those memories uh, will be saved to the driver profile. Now, if you are sitting in your vehicle and your driver profile is activated and, I, and you shut the car off and you get out of the vehicle, your seat shouldn't move. Your seat should stay in the exact position that your seat's in because that is the current profile that is active. Uh, the system does not automatically kick your seat back six inches just because you shut the car off. It doesn't do that. That's not part of the programming. That's not coded in there to do that. Um, there is an option, which you can see under the driver's seat, engage seat position automatically. What that means, as the description shows you over there, is when the driver profile is activated, the last saved seat position is engaged. So, what that means is if driver number two last drove the vehicle, 
came to a stop, parked in the driveway, shut the car off, locked the vehicle, went inside the house with the second key, that vehicle is going to shut down with driver number two's seat position exactly where they're driving. That's, that's the positioning where it's gonna be. If driver number one approaches the vehicle, unlocks the vehicle with key number one now, your last seat position will be automatically positioned where it's supposed to be. The only way your seat is going to move is if driver number one and driver number two is interacting with the vehicle with their keys. But you have to make sure that the profile is set up properly so that the vehicle understands this particular seat position is saved to the right key under the right profile. And you have to make sure that when driver number two is done driving, they're locking the vehicle. If the vehicle is not locked in between driver number two and driver number one, driver number two settings will remain. There is no automatic default. There is no automatic reset. It will stay exactly where the last driver had the seat positioned under that profile. Um, so the way that I describe it best to customers is imagine a computer and imagine your, your login your credentials, where you log into your desktop and all of your files are there. And you can only get to that because you're putting in your credentials and pulling up your information to get to your files, right? Well, the same thing happens with these cars now. Because this car is just a giant laptop. That's all it is now. You'd actually be very surprised, you know, how much it is. So... When driver number two has logged into the vehicle, that's their, you know, getting into their desktop, if you will, and you're getting into your file, which is you're getting into your seat position the way that you have it, and you leave it there, meaning you don't log out of the computer, meaning you don't lock the car. I'm trying to make these connections, so logging out of the car would be locking the car. That's how you, that's how you are fully shutting down and logging out of driver number two is locking the car when driver number two is done. If driver number one wants to log into the car and get their seat the way they want it, they would then be unlocking the car with key number one. That is when you would see the seats move, the side mirrors move, anything that is power and automated and that can be saved to your profile would be changing in that moment. So we are sitting in an X5 right now, which does have a power steering wheel. Uh, so in that case, if there was a big difference between settings between driver number one and driver number two, uh, you would be able to sit, stand outside the car and watch the side mirrors move, the steering wheel move, the seat move, even the, you know, the side bolsters, all this crazy stuff. I mean, you would, ambient light color will change as well. There's actually a lot of different things that are tied to the driver profile, and you can sit and watch all of these things change right in front of you. But it's only going to be triggered by the driver profile. It's not automatically going to move the seat back just because you're in park or just because you've shut the car off. Okay, so some workarounds that we have come up with is let's say there's only one person driving the car. So there is no second driver. So there's no need to set up driver number two on a different key. Well, on your door panel, you do have set one and set two. You do technically have two seat positions you can save. So if you're the only driver and you don't mind doing this, you could technically set number one to your key, which is exactly how you drive. That's the correct position. But you can put your seat back as far as you'd like it to go and press set number two. And you can save that seat position way back there. So when you do come to a stop and you put yourself in park and you shut the car off, you can press and hold the number two button, the seat will go back and then you can get out of the car. If that's how you'd like to work around that. But that is something that you're gonna have to do every time. That's not something that's automatically gonna have, that's gonna happen. Uh, so please keep that in mind, uh, that it's not default uh, set up in the car to do that. Um, it is 
based off of the driver profile. Um, there are definitely workarounds, uh, but that is something that I think as long as we're on the same page with that, um, that's you know the best way forward uh, in, in terms of understanding how the system works. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, my name again is Chris. Uh, please make sure you subscribe so you can always stay up to date with our latest content. And as always, please stay healthy and safe out there.